Are you thinking about self-publishing a book or have you already self-published a book? I think this is a conversation for everyone to get familiar with and this covers time. Time is the most precious commodity in your business and life. And I'm gonna give you a few productivity hacks for writing and publishing in today's video. So make sure that you stay tuned. This is Self Publishing with Dale. And if you wanna learn how to publish books that sell and build an unstoppable author brand, make sure that you subscribe and turn that little bell notification on so that way you don't miss a single video. Today's video is sponsored exclusively by Find Away Voices. If you have an audiobook or want to produce audiobooks, then you should consider Find Away Voices. With the Find Away Voices network, reach over 30 platforms, including Audible, Apple, Google, and more. Big news Voices Share. This new program from Find Away Voices allows you to produce an audiobook for half the price in exchange for sharing 20% of your royalties with the narrator. When starting a new project, you'll see the Voices Share option in application form, review narrators, see cost estimates, and hear some voices for your project for free. Sign up today and give it a try at findawayvoices.com slash dale. Okay, so now we're gonna get into what I love to talk about, and it's saving time. It seems like I'm probably one of the most frugal people in the world next to, say, Keith Wheeler Books. Big shout out to Keith. But I'll tell you that I'm even more frugal when it comes to my time. I'm very, very ruthless with my time, as Roberto Blake once said. He says, be ruthless with your time, and you should be as well. There are so many things that are nicking away at your day that one of the worst things you can do is continue to grind without first focusing on how you can better create a workflow that's conducive and that's gonna really raise your business without killing yourself mentally and physically. So today's video, I'm gonna burn through some things when it comes to writing and publishing. It's gonna save you a ton of time. And if there's any points that really resonate with you, do me a huge favor, drop it inside the comments that, hey, I already do that. I would love to hear if you've already done it, or I haven't tried that yet. Now be honest as we go through these things. So. We're gonna start it out with the problem. The problem is your business is going to be something that will support you, hopefully. At some point, if you're a hobbyist, hopefully it'll come to full time. Either way, the big problem I see is it's death by a thousand cuts, otherwise known as Ling Chi. Those small things that will chip away at your day. And if you aren't careful, you're gonna find you're just spinning your wheels after a while. Now, I'm sure I could probably point out things like don't spend a bunch of time on social media, just trolling people's comments and going into groups and you know contributing to threads and such like that unless it actually moves the needle. Now, those are given. I wanna focus on things that really, truly, when if you just take all those extraneous things that are already interrupting your day and focusing on some of these things that will help you focus on moving the needle in your business. This is going to make a huge difference. All right, so let's start it out with writing tip number one, the first draft. Now, I'm gonna cover writing, and then I'm gonna cover publishing, and then I'm gonna cover writing and publishing. We're gonna cover writing first, the first draft. Now, there's two methodologies you can kind of cover here when it comes to doing your writing. Now there's the pantsers and there's the plotters. You're a pantser if you're the type of person that you just like fly by the seat of your pants and you just go ahead and crank it on out. And then there's the plotter, the person who's gotta put it point by point, A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. And that's good. Each of these methodologies are wonderful. But the thing that you need to do when it comes to being a writer is write on your first draft. Just brain dump. Allow everything to flow onto the paper without any interruption. Now, I know that good friend of the channel, Michael Aron of Author Level Up, is a little bit different when it comes to mindset because he believes that he'll write some of those things out, but then he'll go back and he'll edit some of those things. And that works for Michael. And if that works for you, then go for it. But just make sure that you're not stuck forever in the editing loop to where you're writing your next novel, your manuscript, for the next five, six, seven, or even eight years. And that sounds ridiculous, but there are some people that are doing that. For me, what I do is I go into the writing mode and I just write. I'll plan everything out when it comes to a good outline. But from there, 
I don't allow myself any leeway when it comes to editing. I let the typos go through. I let wrong word choice go through. Heck, if sometimes I need to research a point, I say, you know what, screw it. I'll go ahead and research it later because right now it's all about getting that first draft down. You want to get that out as soon as possible. And a lot of people would think that, oh gosh, writing a book is so tough. Ugh. Have you met marketing and promotion yet? So don't let the first draft be the thing that holds you back. Get it done. So writing tip number two, the quick cleanup. Now the quick cleanup is going to be when you're done with your first draft. You shouldn't be going into full copy editing or line editing or any of the deep dive edits that are involved in your book. This second draft or the second run or the quick cleanup as I call it is just where you're going to go through and fix the typos and fix the passive sentence structure. Fix some of the things that are just a little bit off and that quick cleanup is going to require something as simple as if you're using Microsoft Word, you can use their spelling and grammar checker. I think you guys and gals know exactly my stance when it comes to one of my favorite ones. I use Grammarly. Uh, and actually, I'm an affiliate for this. To be honest with you, if you get it or you don't, is of no consequence to me. DaleLinks.com slash Grammarly. And one of the nicest things I do is I just drop my manuscript into there. I let it go ahead and fix it out based on the particular style that I'm writing in. And then I'm able to just go through and just do that fast cleanup. Just go through and just whip it on out and get it done with. That way it gets into your editor's hand as clean as possible. Because one of the worst things you can do is send a first draft to an editor. They will be pulling their hair out. So the quick cleanup is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache because if you just send that manuscript on over to your editor, that's first of all time that you're going to have to spend fixing things and working with that editor to make sure that they don't, you know, send you hate mail or anything else like that. So Grammarly is a good choice. You can also think of other ones out there. I don't know too much about it. Hemingway. I'm testing out Pro Writing Aid. Uh, there's so many other ones. Just use this for quick cleanup. All right, writing tip. Number three, formatting tools. Okay. And I mean this coming from a good place. And I think we discussed some of these things in my past live broadcast where I kind of talked about some of the tools that you need as an indie author in your business plan. But now we're going to come back to the well on this one because a lot of you are just grinding it out. You're trying to get into Microsoft Word or Google Docs and you're just trying to like, I don't understand, it's, it's not fully formatting properly. Every time I upload it to KDP, it just looks, it looks wonky, it looks crazy, I don't know what happened. It's because you need a good formatting tool. Now there's a number of formatting tools out there I'm gonna recommend. Now Microsoft Word is good, it is sufficient. And maybe some of you have grinded it out. I know a good friend of mine, former coaching student, Mojo, is definitely a, just a pro when it comes to Microsoft Word formatting, uh, but I'm sure she can tell you that she's had many sleepless nights and many times where she's become frustrated, and I know myself that I used to do that as well. Anymore though, I'm just gonna reach out to formatting tools or I'll even hire somebody that can do it for me. Now, there are a few ones I can name off the top of my head. I've heard good things about Vellum. I've heard even better things about Scrivener. If you want to, you can go to use Kindle Creates. It doesn't cost a dime. KDP provides that to you, and they also have tutorials on YouTube on how to use Kindle Creates. And then last but not least, one of my preferred tools is draft to digital uh, They actually have an auto-formatting software on their website. You don't have to publish on draft to digital to use their formatting tools. So let me repeat that, okay? And I'm gonna say it a little bit differently. There's no cost involved and no need to publish through draft to digital if you want to use their interior formatting software. And I asked Kevin Tomlinson in an interview, why do you guys do that? And he just said, it's to be of service to the indie author community. And they truly do mean that. And I really love their software. If you have not had the opportunity to set up an account for draft to digital, head over to my referral link of dalelinks.com slash D2D. And um, I, I really dig draft to digital's interior formatter. Now there's gonna become some limitations. If you have a ton of images, then chances are likely either A, you're gonna to have to grind it out, which I wouldn't recommend, or B, hire a professional. So you're gonna probably hear hire a professional sometimes when it comes to some of these productivity hacks. All right, so we've talked a little bit about writing. 
I want to kind of give a little bit of equal attention when it comes to publishing. Let's go ahead and focus on publishing tip number one. And I heard somebody say this before I actually went live and they were kind of talking about essentially an assembly line. Getting everything in order uh, so that way you're not just doing one piece at a time. You're actually doing in bulk specific things for your workflow to go as smoothly as possible. Now if you're just publishing one book, then chances are likely that you're probably just gonna do one thing at a time. But if you're the person who's doing say no content books or low content books, or you're building a self-publishing business with a number of indie authors underneath your publishing brand, then chances are likely the assembly line's gonna work best. Now what you're gonna do is plan out your week and you're gonna do each one of these tasks. It's going to be a specific time of the day and a specific day of the week in some instances. So for instance, instead of doing keyword research for say 15, 20 minutes and then moving on to the next step and then just trying to go through one book, what you could do instead is do all your keyword research for all of the things that you plan on publishing maybe over the next week the next two weeks or maybe the next month. Get it all done at the same time and make sure that you're putting off that keywords off to the side for whatever the publication is. List it properly. The next thing's going to be the next day, you're going to fix all of your metadata. You're going to get everything prepped, put it all in order. Make sure you have the HTML so it pops up off the page. Maybe the next day, you're going to do a little bit of research on covers and find out what works for your niche. See what you would like to have your covers looking like. Compile all of the links to that and communicate that with your cover designer. Now, if you happen to do your own cover designs, then it's probably a good idea to hang on to those URLs nonetheless, so that way when you get ready to work on yours, you have a couple of examples in front of you that you're able to tweak it perfectly. And then formatting. I've already kind of mentioned formatting before. If you're gonna grind it out or if you've got the software, hopefully, you're going to do your formatting all in a single day. And then rinse and repeat. So let's say one day is entirely for publishing. So everything, if you can, put it inside an assembly line and get a daily method of operation flow. So when you are working on your business, it's very predictable. You know what you're gonna be doing from one day to the next, that way, you're gonna to start to understand, okay, if I do this much, then I'm gonna see my income rise this much, or I'm gonna see this much results. So, next one is going to be a big one here. Now, I kinda of gave you all this information about metadata, but where are we gonna start? Okay, folks, this publishing tip number three, this is a simple one, and I'm not gonna even send you to a specific you know, site. Cloud storage. Now, simple as possible here. Google, if you've got a Gmail, I imagine quite a few of you do, you probably already have a Google Drive and it takes up to 15 gigs. And that can store thousands of books metadata. And you can put it into a spreadsheet of some sort, which I'd highly recommend, use Google Spreadsheets for this. Put all your metadata in to one spot inside a Google Drive. If you wanna use cloud, um, or excuse me, the other cloud drives, like say Dropbox, or OneDrive is probably one of my preferred ones, um, go ahead, that's up to you. If you're a newbie self-publisher, I'd recommend don't spend a ton of money for cloud drive if you don't have the discretionary expense. Now, the reason I'm gonna say cloud storage, a lot of you are like, ah, Dale, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my external hard drive. And hey, I, I totally get it. But I want you to think big. Think bigger because somewhere down the line, you're gonna become successful. And I have that much belief and faith in all of you that you can become successful if you really work this business like a business. And so thinking further down the line, I want you to save your team that you're going to eventually hire a lot of time and heartache by listing the metadata inside a cloud drive. So that way, when you bring people onto your team, it's not like, oh, you know, just look it up. Go into my KDP account. That's not gonna work. So if you go and you send them on over to this cloud drive, they're gonna see the date that you published it on. Maybe you enrolled it on KDP Select and when it's going to re-enroll, maybe you ran a free book promotion on a specific date and you're looking to do it on another one. Maybe it's got the seven keywords and some of those keywords aren't quite working out, so maybe you'll try another second set of keywords. 
all this metadata, you're going to want to make sure you put it in the cloud drive. Trust me on this. All of you writers out there, I implore you. I want to have a moment of silence for all of the, the stories I wrote that got erased, just ruined, because I had a laptop just went, <laughs> died on me. And I just trusted it was going to be fine. Okay? Back that stuff up into a cloud drive. Get it on up there. Get your covers put up. Get your, get your interiors put up there. Uh, don't go too crazy on the number of edited you know, documents. So if you've got six versions of your book, let's go ahead and just pare that down to what you need inside your cloud drive so that way you're not having to pay an arm and a leg for just a bunch of clutter. All right, so next one is going to be report checking. For some reason, I think that I skipped a number at some point, so whatever. If you happen to notice that, let me know inside the chat. Okay, I just, and this is going to go everything from your sales report to even looking at your rank on your, your sales page. Some of you get real excited. I get it. Maybe you're looking for that bestseller tag and you want to kind of get a screenshot of it. But if this is what rules your day, it's slowly chipping things away one time. Folks, it's not the stock market. You're not day trading, okay? You're publishing books. So in all likelihood, it's not going to change that much between one 24-hour period and the next. And I mean report checking, even going into say the Amazon advertising reports, checking it once per day. One of the things I'd recommend, pick it once per day. If you're gonna go into your KDP account, you might as well go ahead, you're gonna hit your draft the digital account, you're gonna hit your Amazon advertising account, you're gonna go over into your Author Central account so you can check your ranks, get it all done at the same time, that way you're not going back and forth and you're clicking on things and wasting a ton of time and going, oh, I'm getting ready to go from 3,000 to 2,000. That, that's all well and good, but the thing is, is as you're going and you're watching these reports like a hawk, you could very well be doing more marketing and promotion or you could be relaxing or you could be making the next book, writing it and publishing it. Anything but going back to your reports time and again. And as I got one finger pointed forward, three are pointed back because in my early days, oh, I was all over it. These days, if you were to ask me like, hey, have you had a bestseller in one of your latest books? I don't know, I don't pay attention to that. I just pay attention to what makes the difference, what moves the needle. So that is uh, the, the tips so far. Um, the next tip I'm going to give you when it comes to writing and publishing is a time study. Now, back when I used to be in the workforce and the healthcare industry, pretty early on, I had one of my bosses come up to me and she said, we're going to have you fill out this time study sheet. I was like, well, what's this all about? You're going to you know, pretty much track everything you do throughout the day. I was offended. I'm like, well, you don't trust me? I'm like, no, no, it has nothing to do with trusting you. We just, we kind of want to see what your workflow is. And I just, even then, I was just kind of like irritated. I'm like, I've got to stop and write every little thing that I'm doing throughout the day. Today, I just went to lunch at 12.02. And, you know, I filed paperwork from 1 to 1.15. And it, it was kind of like doing a food log journal. If, you know, you're looking to lose weight, uh, you get a food log and you just track all those things. It's a pain in the butt, so it made me really analyze what I was doing. So if you start to do a time study, I want you to be very diligent. You can get this in a simple journal that you can write it out or you can even do it on a spreadsheet of some sort. Either way, you're going to be really honest about this and you're going to sit down for maybe a day to as much as, a sing as a, an entire week, if not an entire month and start to analyze what are you doing throughout the day that makes the difference because this time study is going to get it to where you see what you're doing right so you can double down on that and what you're doing wrong. What's wasting your time? Are you over watching cat videos on YouTube? Are you inside a Facebook group fighting with trolls about a specific political issue? I mean, you're going to be able to see exactly on paper. And here's the beauty of it. As you get ready to do something, you're like, I'm going to go ahead and scroll through Pinterest for the next five hours. Uh, you're writing it down and you go, oh, that's probably not, not, not the best idea. So start to write that time study. I, it's going to take a lot of dedication and a lot of discipline to stay on top of this, but I promise you, you're gonna probably start to find 
little gaps in your day that you can fill full of specific work that's going to move the needle. Um, as um, once, a, stick around for just a second here. And I'm, I'm a little lost for words. Uh, I'm going to actually give you guys a bonus tip. That was actually one of my last ones. I decided last minute. Let's go ahead and I'm going to give you a bonus tip. But before we do, I want to let you know, uh, folks, hey, every Saturday from now on, 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime here, Universal Time Coordinate in minus four, we're going to be streaming right here on YouTube on this channel. So if you're already subscribed and you turn the bell notification on, you're going to get it. A uh, simple way to get to is dalelinks.com slash live. It will be the podcast recording for the next three weeks. Um, that's where I was doing it over on twitch.tv slash self-publish and I will for the next three weeks. And uh, you're going to join me this coming week, guys. I'm going to share a little bit about my self-publishing experience and how I started my self-publishing business. And it's cringeworthy. You, you guys and gals are going to laugh your heads off. So some of these things that I'm sharing with you now about time waste and everything else, you're going you're gonna to hear this. But we're going to do that in the podcast episode this coming Saturday. You don't want to miss out on that. And starting Monday, September the 16th, Every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime, from then on, we're going to move the podcast recording for twitch.tv slash self-publish to that Monday time slot, and that will be staying there. So we're still going to stream Wednesdays on, at 6 p.m. and Saturdays at 12 p.m. on YouTube, but we're moving Twitch and the podcast with it. So the Saturdays will then start to have this type of a format on YouTube. So you can look forward and anticipate that. And while I'm kind of thinking about it, if you haven't already followed or subscribed to me over on Twitch, what are you doing with your life? It's a lot of fun. You're going to be seeing even more details when it comes to self-publishing. And the self-publishing podcast over there is a little bit more light. It's a little bit more loose. It's a lot more fun. There's a little bit more interaction. You can subscribe for free with your Amazon Prime. And... Uh, I just, it's a great way to support the broadcast over on twitch.tv slash self-publish, but at the very least, you can always hit the follow and turn notifications on. All right, so I told you guys and gals, we're going to have a bonus tip. So here it is, a bonus tip. Okay, so I said we were going to go ahead and get a bonus tip. This is one, oh, oh. Last month, I easily coached about 40, if not 50 different people inside self-publishing. Uh, I had kind of an, an open house, if you will, where I sat down with people for about 30 minutes. And I would say 99% of the people that I saw were guilty of this particular thing. If you're going to go and visit a website every day, and for some of you that are checking your reports numerous times throughout the day, if you're gonna do that and you're not gonna to listen to me on this one, at least listen to me on this one. Bookmarks. Bookmark these specific areas that you're going to be going back. If you're going to Amazon advertising, that needs to be bookmarked. KDP.amazon.com, bookmark it. DraftTheDigital.com, bookmark it. Facebook.com slash group slash self-publishing books, Bookmark it. Bookmark those things because every single time you're going to typing in, click, 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 click. Oh, oh, backspace, backspace. Click, 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 click. It's wasting time. You know you're going to be going back to it, so why don't you have it bookmarked? Now, some of you might be kind of wondering, like, what do you mean by bookmarks, Dale? So here's what I'm going to do is let me go into a little bit of a screen share and I will show you what I mean when it comes to bookmarking. So you'll see at the very top of my browser here, all of these bookmarks, all these symbols mean something. So if I want to go to YouTube inside my channel, all I have to do is click this button. If I want to go to ACX, I click this button. If I want to go to KDP, I click this button. Now in the event that you're kind of like, Ugh, I really don't want all that distraction up there, then get at least a soft copy of it, put it on a Microsoft document that you can easily click open at the beginning of your day have all those hyperlinks available. So then all you got to do is just click on it and it opens it. So what I do typically is when I go to my reports, you saw all those things, I go click, 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 click. And what I'll do is I'll click it open and then I'll press control, click on the next one. So it opens up another tab and another tab. So I have numerous tabs across and I just burn through each one of them. A lot of people want to know how I get things accomplished so fast, bookmarks and I just try to get it to where I get it done. You make decisive action a lot faster because remember at the end of the day, you're not gonna get paid for typing in websites, you know, uh, and having that eat up your day. 
Type it once, bookmark it, go back to it repeatedly by just clicking. Click in there, boom, done. Alrighty. So that's how I get more things done, my productivity hacks for writing and publishing. Granted, it's not exhaustive. I do a lot more things throughout the day that really get me focused. While I'm still talking about some of the things that are gonna optimize and maximize your workflow, I think it's important we address some self-publishing resources and tools. In fact, I have a deep back catalog of resources and tools videos, and you don't wanna miss any single one of these. In fact, I am gonna go ahead and meet you there.